know if you're like me and so many people that I know is you have burdens, you carry things that are weighing us down and the world we live in, it doesn't matter who you are in this place, I don't care how much faith you got, the world has a way of just, just matter of fact, just look at the world, all you have to do is just look and it weighs us down and so listen, I know that you've come into this place, there's some of you who are carrying things, do you know that you're carrying something you're not meant to carry and that the only place, and you've probably tried to place that burden someplace before here tonight or you tried to make it dependent upon somebody else getting their life together. Or maybe yourself trying to do it through works, trying to just act, do a little harder next time. You're going to put a little more effort in this time. You're going to do it for your daughter. You're going to do it for your son. Listen, it never worked. My kids were hanging. I had one on one side and one on the other side saying, Daddy, don't leave. They were hanging off my legs, holding all their weight. And I shook both my kids off my feet to go out and get some crack cocaine. So don't tell me you're coming in here and repeating the same behaviors, expecting different results. We're calling you tonight. Listen, I only know because I lived it. And the only one I know that is capable of handling the things that I carry is Jesus Christ. He says, take my, give him your burdens. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He takes the heaviness that you carry, that you're not meant to carry, you can't carry. Listen, your parents and loved ones can't carry it for you either because they would have a long time ago if they could have. If they could have got you right, you wouldn't be in this place right now. They would have figured your life out 10 years ago. They would have saved yourself and them from a whole lot of consequences. How many of y'all know we can create havoc in other people's lives? Some of our loved ones in here. Just think back to your kids, your mom, your dad, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters. We destroy people. Our addiction destroys people, not just ourselves. The enemy would love to tear everybody apart. We have got to stop fighting our battles with flesh and blood, God. I know you don't get that. I'm going to explain it out a little more. What I mean by that is you're fighting in your own strength with your own self-help books. I don't know. Listen, it ain't all bad. I'm a big component of counseling and therapy and all that stuff. You've got to go for a little while to do it. But do it with God in you. Cause then it will work. I've tried. I was. I've seen so many counselors in my life. It wasn't funny. They never figured me out. Cause you know why? Nothing in this world was meant to fill. Nothing was meant to fill this void that was in my life. And I tried to stick everything else that didn't belong there in it. And it wasn't until I came to an altar, just like these right here. These ain't fancy wood for nothing. These are here so that people come to them and they knee on them and they place their face on them. That's what they're for. And my life took a drastic change six years ago. After being sober nine years and relapsed, going back in six years of addiction, smoking crack and heroin like I wouldn't even believe it. When I come back up to an altar like this, Jesus said to me, Billy, this was my life. It wasn't the 80% that you were giving me. I wasn't a half manager. I was like a three-quarter percenter. But I always had a back door to God's plan. Just in case he didn't work out, I had another option. He, when I came up here the last time, he said, Billy, I didn't even say a word either. I cried like I've never cried before. He said, I don't want the 80%. I want the 20% that you have been so hard driven not to give me your entire life. And that was me. And that was me not in the face of everybody else and what everyone would think of me if I took this thing seriously. What would they think of me? Listen, they're already thinking something about you. Come on now. If you're a drug addict like I was, they already got some thoughts. And you're sitting here worried about what you're going to look like if you turn your life over to God? Come on. That's a straight lie from the pit of hell. The enemy will do whatever he can to get you to stop from taking that step of faith. And tonight, I am believing. We are believing and interceding for you. There are people praying over this church service right now that you would step out of those seats and you would make your way right up here to the front of this altar during our prayer time. My wife, Shawnee, is going to be up here on this side. My brother, Tim, is going to be on this side. And they're prayer intercessors. And what they're going to do is they're going to stand up here. And you're going to say, y'all, pray for me. And they're going to say, what do you want me to pray for? And then everybody else in here that believes in the power of prayer is going to come up too and pray over you. And they're going to call and pray for you on your behalf. 
And so right now, as the, they begin to sing and we just go back into another time of worship, I'm calling you forward. If you're powerless over your addiction and your life is unmanageable, if you're powerless over your relationships and fear and worry and anxiety and all the other junk that the world puts on you, come forward. Stop sitting in your seat and start heading out with Jesus. Start giving it to him. Place your burdens at the altar and don't pick them back up after you leave this place. Let them hear once and for all. And so as we sing, please come forward. Come up and let's pray together. If you're a sister or brother in this house and you believe in the power of prayer, you make your way forward to and lay a hand on one of these brothers and sisters and let them know that you're praying for them. You're believing. You're going to the throne of grace on their behalf. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is supposed to do. We don't let nobody come up here solo. We come with them. I know people carried me all the way through. I couldn't even carry myself. And so please come forward and pray with these brothers and sisters.